Many e-commerce websites are created using PayPal standard buttons as a simple and economical way to begin selling on the web. However, as businesses grow, people find that they need to transition to an on-site shopping cart and offer a secure, seamless checkout on their own website. Or they want to integrate shipping quotes, complex shipping rules, coupon codes, and more. This tutorial provides a simple way to upgrade your site from using PayPal standard buttons to offering your customers a full, custom, on-site checkout experience. Instead of the overwhelming proposition of going from page to page to edit the buttons, we mimic the options that exist in PayPal's shopping cart in your own customized checkout experience with eCart, saving you hours of work. Even if you have hundreds of PayPal buttons on your website, you can quickly upgrade using this tutorial. You must own eCart to follow this tutorial. eCart is shopping cart software for Adobe Dreamweaver that will help you sell goods and services or accept donations on your website. For more information on eCart, visit www.webassist.com go slash eCart. So to begin, make sure you have a site defined in Dreamweaver CS4 or higher, have eCart 5 or higher activated in Dreamweaver, and of course you need one or more pages with a PayPal standard button on it. So let's go ahead and get started. Open up Dreamweaver and we're going to create a page that we're going to put the shopping cart on. I'm going to do it from my site template. and I will go ahead and save it as a PHP page. Now we're going to start with creating the eCart object. Go ahead and go up to the WebAssist menu in Dreamweaver, select eCart, eCart object. Click the plus button to create a new eCart object for your site. So we'll go ahead and name the cart. Let's name it PP for PayPal cart. And then you can adjust these settings as needed on this tab. Let's go over to the columns tab. We're going to add um, some extra columns here to make it match up with your pay PayPal settings. So go ahead and click the plus button. The first one will be base shipping. And that needs to be an integer. The next one needs to be additional shipping. We'll call this add shipping, which should also be an integer. And we need option name, which would be text, and option value, which would be text. And the last one is handling charge, which is an integer. The rest of the tabs we don't need to do anything with for this tutorial. However, you can read up. We have eCart tutorials on filling these out so that you can customize things further if you want. I'm going to go ahead and click OK to create the eCart object and click Finish. Now that we have the eCart object, we're going to put the actual shopping cart display on the page. So click in your, on your page where you want the cart to display, then click Web Assist, eCart, Display Manager. Make sure for the cart you select the name that we gave the cart in the eCart object. So for me, this is PP Cart. And then you can change the design uh, however you wish. Go to the next screen, and here you can change uh, each of the columns in your shopping cart to display um, either always or specific to mobile, desktop, tablet, those sorts of things. This is a feature that was new to eCart 6. Once you're happy with the way that's laid out, click Next. And I'm going to leave the default for how discounts, charges, shipping, and tax all show up um, in my shopping cart. We'll go ahead and click Finish. And the shopping cart gets added to the page. I'm going to go ahead and save it. 
So the next thing we're going to do here is add um, a display in the shopping cart for option names and values. You only need to do this if your products um, had you know, sizes or colors or something that had options and you were storing those with your PayPal buttons. Right now they're not going to display anywhere in the cart. So if you want to display those things you need to add that manually. So right here these two PHP tags you see are name and description. I'm going to click after the name and and hit enter on my keyboard so that I can put the option names and values in here. So that created a paragraph tag. We'll go over to the bindings window and you can see my eCart object is right here. If I scroll down, option name and option value bindings are right here. I'm going to drag each of these onto the page. So first we'll put an option name. Again, this would be uh, colors or sizes or the label basically for your options in your product. So I'm going to put a colon and a space after that. And then I'm going to take option value, which would be the specific values um, such as the individual colors or the individual sizes, um, whatever somebody chose to add to the cart. And I'm going to drag that over here. And we'll go ahead and click Save. The next thing we need to do is update the form action from our PayPal buttons to add things to this shopping cart instead of uh, making them go to PayPal's shopping cart. So what we're going to do is open uh, just any one of our pages that has the PayPal Buy Now or Add to Cart button on it. And we want to find the form action. So right here, if you look in code view, you can see that this is the form's action. You want to highlight uh, what's between the quotes, right click on it, and click Find and Replace. So in this window, we're going to want to select entire current local site because we're going to want to replace the form action uh, everywhere across the site. This will save us from doing it on every page. And we're going to search the source code the find is, uh, is already in there. Dreamweaver put that in, it, in there for us since we uh, had highlighted it. And for the replace, what we want the action to be is the name of our shopping cart page. Now if you have uh, subfolders um, that your product pages are in, um, then you're going to need to use the absolute path to your shopping cart page so that no matter where those pages are within the folders of your site, they'll be able to find the shopping cart page. Go ahead and click replace all. It's telling me that um, it may replace it in pages that are not open and then I can't use the undo feature. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, that's fine. And my site is getting updated. Let's go ahead and test that form action so we can preview uh, this page in a browser. We'll go ahead and click on our Buy Now button. And you can see that uh, it directed to the shopping cart. We haven't yet um, worked out the code to add the item to the shopping cart. We're going to do that next, but you can at least see this is posting to the correct page. So let's go back to Dreamweaver. The next thing we'll do is bind the PayPal button data to your shopping cart uh, page. So we, need, we, we basically need to change these bindings. So first of all, to be able to access the bindings, we need to add the form data to the shopping cart page. So make sure you're on the shopping cart page. Go to the bindings window, click plus form data. And then we're going to browse to one of the pages with the PayPal buttons. Now if you have a quantity field stored with your PayPal button on some pages but not others, make sure you select one of the pages that actually has the quantity field and this, this will matter for later. So I will go ahead and select this page which has an add to cart button and uses a quantity field on the page and click OK. And you can see um, the form from the Add to Cart page got uh, added to my bindings window. I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to go over to the Server Behaviors window. 
Now we are going to uh, create a server behavior to bind the correct uh, button data into our shopping cart. So click plus, eCart, add to cart, add to cart. Make sure you have the correct eCart object selected here. And then for trigger, click the lightning bolt. Expand the form data that we just added and click CMD and click OK. We don't want to redire redirect to another page, so we leave this empty. We go over to the bindings tab. Here we're going to select the PayPal button default values as the as what we're binding to the shopping cart columns. So we need to find the correlating PayPal information we're sending um, for, for each item here. So click ID. Now we're going to go down to default value and click the lightning bolt. And that would be the same as the item number. Uh, click OK. For the name, we're going to click item name. Now PayPal buttons don't pass across description and thumbnail. I'm going to just leave these empty. You can also remove what you don't want here. Um, weight, we leave the way it is. Quantity, so here's where it matters where we selected a page with a quantity field. So if all of your pages um, with PayPal buttons have quantity fields, then what you do is you select the lightning bolt and you find quantity and click OK. Now if all of your PayPal button pages uh, do not have quantity fields, this instead when you select it, it would say undefined quantity and you can select that. However, if you have pages that some of the buttons allow the user to pass a quantity over to PayPal and some of the pages don't, then you need to also take one extra step here. Right between these two last quotes, we add a one. And that will cover the scenarios um, for which some of the pages have quantities and some don't. It will basically add a quantity of one for any time the user is not able to put one in there and it will also allow the pages that have quantity fields and the user says they want to you know select three and send it over to the shopping cart um, it'll it'll account for that too okay so that's covered there for price we're going to select the lightning bolt and click amount for base shipping, we have a shipping field. For additional shipping, there's a shipping to field. Now again, depending on what you've set up with your PayPal buttons, these might vary a little bit. For the most part, you can see that it's pretty self-explanatory what you want to select, but we can also we can always help you in tech support if you have specific um, options that you've chosen and, and you're not sure what to do here, then we're happy to help you. Um, okay, option name, PayPal calls this ON0, and option value is OS0. Handling charge is handling, and that's everything. We can click OK and save the page. Next, we can preview um, one of our button pages in the browser and see if the items are getting added to the cart now. So if we go over to the files and I'm going to select my add to cart page, right click and do preview in browser. We pull up the add to cart page. Um, now we can change some information here if we really want to test things. We'll change the color to red, the quantity to five. We will add this to the cart. And you can see that now we have stayed on our site on our shopping cart. We've got a quantity of five and everything um, got added correctly to the shopping cart. So let's go back to Dreamweaver and make sure you're on the shopping cart page. If you're used to 
charging a handling charge with your PayPal buttons, you need to add that to your eCar object. So open the eCar object from the server behaviors window and go to the charges tab, click plus, and we can call this handling charge, the name of the rule. We're going to add a trigger. We're going to set that to total number of unique items in the cart is greater than zero based on multiple of column subtotal. Then for subtotal of column, we will select handling charge and we will click OK. Now, if you're using base shipping and additional shipping in your PayPal button, there's also one more thing to do. Go to the Calculations tab. And we're going to add one more calculation. Let's name it Cart Shipping. And this will be a currency. And then there's a formula that you need to put in here. This code will be in the written tutorial, and you can copy and paste it uh, from there. There's a link to it in the video description. This gives us a calculation that we can go um, set up a charge with. So go back to the Charges tab, and we will add another charge. Call this Shipping Charge. Add a trigger. We're going to take the same steps if the total number of unique items in the cart is greater than zero then we will calculate based on multiple of column subtotal and we will select cart shipping and click OK click OK and then go ahead and save your page so if we go back to our browser and look at the add to cart button page again um, we can see that the charges are now going to all be combined into one charge, all of our shipping and handling charges, um, based on making that rule. So let's go ahead and add this to the cart. And you can see the charges are all summarized in one line here, based on what we were storing in our PayPal button. That pretty much covers it. You can run the checkout wizard next to create your full secure e-commerce checkout pages. And uh, we have tutorials to cover that in our tutorial library. Um, to learn about WebAssist software, see more tutorials, or get free technical support, please visit us at www.webassist.com. Thank you.